All right, we are live, and today I've got Zach Schur. He is a New York agent, and I've got to read this. This bio is pretty doggone long. I've had some studs on here, but this fucker's <laughs> long, so I'm cheating, man. I'm reading off my screen here. He started, and you got to remember this because it's going to be a big deal. He started real estate in 2016. I still can't believe that as I read the rest of this. Started in 2016. He's a team lead. He's got four agents working full-time. Remember that. Only four. He's got nine part-timers. And he was the broker agent of the month for the Broker Agent Advisor publication. It's a, it's a nice little website uh, or a magazine. You can get the website link up below, above in the comments. You can see all that in there. So this guy is being seen by everybody around the nation. And he closed on 130 homes last year. And, and I, I won't take your thunder here. You're on pace to do how many this year? About, about 200 houses. Ooh, that's a lot of houses, man. You and four others doing full time. And you got the help of nine other part-timers. That's pretty amazing, man. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. amazing. To do that since 2016 is incredibly impressive. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that begs the question, right? And, and my audience primarily, I get a lot of people in my market that are watching, just you know, friends and, and Facebook followers and that kind of stuff. But I get a lot of agents and these agents are hungry. They want to know how a guy like you got there. So what is the number one thing that you did, or maybe it's a mindset, something you implemented that got you that amount of success that quickly? Sure. I mean, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. And I get this question a lot. Everybody asks me, what's the secret sauce? Why yep. did you find success so early? And I mean, it starts with kind of my foundation. Before I got into real estate, I was in marketing and advertising. So I got you know my bachelor's degree and my master's degree in graphic communication management and design. So I was doing marketing, I was consulting, I was working yeah. for different companies, branding them, putting them out there. And then at the same time, I then started teaching. So I was teaching at a few different universities locally to students and I was kind of teaching them how to also brand, market, design, everything like that. I found real estate kind of on a whim. You know, it was really kind of, I was looking into flipping houses for myself. You know, I wanted to flip, I wanted to kind of list my own properties, maybe do a couple deals here or there. So I fell in love with it. I found that I could bring together everything that I've learned thus far and help make myself and set myself apart from everybody else. So marketing was one of the biggest things that I learned in advertising and branding. It was so huge. So when I first started, I joined a team. Uh, I joined a successful team on Long Island in Center Reach. And I learned from my team leader quite a bit. Her name's Rita Takaris. Team Rita, if you've ever heard of them before, they're huge on Long Island in the Center Reach area. So I learned from her, she taught me a lot of great things. And then I learned that very quickly, I needed to invest in myself. Yeah. So I started taking the money that I was making and putting it into my business. because so I could see immediately how big of a, you know, a difference it would make. Yeah. So started funding my own marketing and advertising, tried to keep myself as busy as possible. And then through that, you know, it's work ethic, you know, it's, it's really just working harder than everybody else that's out there. You know, and that and that's you know that's really the biggest thing there's no there's no secret you know at the end of the day you know it's it's you, you can do a million there's a million ways to be successful in real estate yep the biggest thing is is just having the drive desire and the work ethic to be successful and that's kind of what can you know there's a lot of reasons but that's really what catapulted me you know initially to being successful as quickly as i've become so you got your degree from a pretty prestigious school where'd you go uh, NYU, New York University, right in Manhattan, you know, so I, I was working full time and then I was, you know, getting my degree. Basically, I was working nine to five, uh, you know, as a consultant. And then I went into the city and I was, you know, commuting in there to get my degree. And I was doing it at the same time. Say so the value of education and continuing to learn, you know, it doesn't matter how many degrees you have or if you have no degrees doesn't make a difference as long as you're continuously learning that's one of the biggest things so yes. i always wanted to continue my education so getting my masters was a no-brainer i wanted to do it because i wanted to continue my education so i've got a comment here i'm going to share in a second but before i do you're talking about marketing and marketing was one of the big things that you say kind of got you where it is that that you've gotten to and you've gotten there so quickly when you look at a new age a lot of these new agents have 
two grand, three grand, five grand in their bank account. They do not know anything about marketing. They go on Facebook, they go on Instagram and they post pretty pictures of houses and they hope that they're going to get 10 leads a day off of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So give me a little bit of insight for someone who's got a limited budget. They're brand new. They don't know anything about marketing. Give us some tangible insight as to what, what you would recommend they do. There's, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You want to provide value to your audience. So even if you don't have a big budget, I mean, we've all got one of these, right? Yep. Everybody has one, right? That's it. You know, so you literally can walk in front of any house, anywhere and you know, anywhere. It doesn't make a difference and provide value. Tell them something that they don't know already. And the more effort that you put out there and the more ways that you can get your face in front of more people yep. is the more recognizable you'll be. And the more ways that people will want to reach out to you. Hey, I know, you know, that guy, you know, I've seen him everywhere. And that's the thing. Like a lot of people have reached out to me just because they've seen me from different things that I've done, you know, and that's what I I preach to my team is that the more present you can be in this marketplace, the better, the more people will see you and want to work with you. Yeah. hundred percent. So I've got a comment. I don't know if you can see it below here, but it's Tom Gavin. He's in Maryland. And he asks what books helped influence your growth? So it's funny. So I I haven't always been the biggest reader, but one of the ones that I I really like is uh, Grant Cardone's 10X Rule. You know, I mean, everybody who's anybody has read that book, right? Yeah, it fires me up. Yeah, you know, it's it's fantastic. I mean, you know, and it's it's something that even if you're you're the type of person you read a lot and you feel like you've known everything. Most of these, you know, these types of books that you'll read or seminars that you go to, everybody's really saying the same thing. It's really more effort equals more production, right? So that's the 10x rule. Give 10x effort and you'll get 10 times the results, right? So when I was reading the book, a lot of it was like, yeah, this is things that I normally do on a regular basis. But when you hear it from somebody else, it really, really helps. So, I mean, if, if you're someone that's struggling and, you know, even if you're in real estate, if you're not in real estate, Read that book because, I mean, there's a lot of great things in there that you can take away that will help really, you know, compact what you need to do to be successful in almost any industry. It doesn't even matter if it's real estate or not. You know, it's, it's a great book. And that that's one of the ones, you know, I've read a few books, you know, recently, but that's the one that sticks in my head the most as one of the most important ones to read. He's a great guy, has tons of video, tons of content out there. You know, it's, it's good stuff. I remember I had my goals built when I read that book. Yeah. And when I read that book, the way he words it, he says, take whatever goals you've got in mind and multiply it by 10. But yeah. then you can't just multiply it by 10. You have to multiply your effort by 10. And when you hear that, you're like, dude, I don't know if I can do that. Like that's, yeah. re- I'm already going like a crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it, the, the, the point isn't that you literally do it by 10. It's that you, you change the limits you've got in your head. You get rid of those limits. Mindset. Yeah. And 100%. it's such a mindset book. It's amazing. So it, I love it, that, you that one. It's so funny because I agents, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be a question later, but every agent that's come to my team, I've never recruited. Everybody that's on my team has come to me and asked me for help. So the thing is, is that I've seen agents that are doing no deals. I have seen agents that are doing 10. I've seen agents that are doing 20 or 30. All of them feel like that's the absolute max they can possibly do. Yep. And they're just, you know, they can't get up you know, beyond like I've done this many. How could I feasibly have more time to do it? And then I tell them and, you know, I don't try to toot my own horn, but my first full year of real estate, I did 40 transactions yeah. by myself. I mean, I was on a team, but I was really doing it pretty much predominantly by myself. So I said, yeah. I, it's all about just changing your mindset. If you yep. can just believe like and that's what's that's what's the best part about real estate is that you can come up with the craziest number in your mind, how many transactions you could do, how much money you can make, anything about it. And you can achieve that and then some. And that's what I love about it. It's it's it gives you a high every time you do five more deals or you know, you you hit a certain new goal. It's just there's no limit. You can literally the sky's the sky's not even the limit. You can just keep going. You know, there's there's you go really forever, good. man. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So in this market, just last month Mm -hmm. for two different couples, I had to write four offers on four different homes each before we got them accepted. All of those offers were overpriced, uh, some of them as much as $10,000. 
And I lost on, well, the first three for both of them. And then on the fourth one for both, I got it. So as an agent in an extremely, extremely competitive market right now, a seller's market, what one or two things would you suggest to realtors out there right now that they're not thinking of? Price is obvious, right? What else can I do to make my offer more competitive? You've got to present your offer in the best way possible and make it as clean as easy and attractive to a seller as you possibly can. So if you just put out an offer and granted, you know, at the end of the day, if you're going to get outbid and even in our market, we've seen people go 40, $50,000 over asking. So yeah. at the end of the day, if you're getting beat out by 50 grand, there's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how pretty you make it, yep. you know, but there's a lot of different things, you know, for one, letting them know, Hey, I've been working with these buyers for X amount of time. I know them really well. Here's what, you know, my, my, you know, this one guy does, here's what his wife does. This is how long they've been working for. Tell them the terms and really sell it. Really let them know, like, listen, you know, they're going to go 15 over asking. Maybe they're going to waive the inspection. They're working with my mortgage lender. They're working with my yeah. attorney. I'm going to make this as streamlined as possible. And you try to sell it. And a big part of it too, I mean, especially, you know, a new agent getting out there, it's a little bit more difficult in this type of a market. Yeah. You know, so if you latch onto a team where you have a little bit more of a presence, it certainly helps. But in our market, I know a lot of the agents that are out there, you know, and, and through my team. And, you know, like you said, you know, I've I have four actually now five full time agents and nine part time agents, you know. So between all of us, we know a lot of the agents that we work with. So when you present an offer to somebody that, you know, or, you know, in some way, shape or form, you can create these connections. So it's it's so important to network with your fellow agents, even if you're not the same company, mm -hmm. even if you're not, you know, working together in some way, shape or form, you want to meet as many people as possible. So you can put a face to the name. So when you present your offer, they know who it's coming from. It's not coming from some random person they've never heard of before. Yes. Yes. I love all that. And I'm huge on relationships. Yeah. I always say the biggest client you have is all the other agents, right? Yeah. All the other agents, if you make them fall in love with you, if they trust you, if they like you, you're going to do multiple deals with all those guys. Sure. So really make the right. I think that's an absolutely great point. So let's now let's, let's turn the tables here. Okay. We talked about buyers. What about sellers? You walk into a listing appointment and they're thinking, Hey, I can sell with anybody right now. This market's hot, which yeah. is true. But there's a difference between selling with a stud and selling with someone average, and it's a lot of money a lot of times, or it's an increased opportunity of actually getting that sucker to close. What are you selling when you go in there when you're selling yourself? We we deal a lot with this right now, and in in our market, a lot of people are trying to sell by themselves. A lot of for sale by owners right now wow. because they feel, hey, the market's so hot, I just have to put you know a sign out front that I'm selling yep. my home and it's going to sell. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, they're probably right. You yep. pretty much, if you price your house right, your house will sell, guaranteed. Yep. But will it sell for the most money? Yeah. And that's the big difference. And what I show when I go on a listing appointment is that if you look at my listings in comparison to my competitors, all of my listings in the past six months, since we've been basically been able to show houses physically, yeah. have all gone above asking. And it's for a combination of reasons. It's because we can show exactly the way that we market and advertise our homes. You know, some agents will go out there, they'll take the pictures themselves, maybe they'll hire somebody, but we do a whole presentation. We do professional photography, we do video, we do 3D virtual tours, we do drone. We want to put it out as best as we possibly yeah. can. And then we do a combination of a lot of advertising to specifically feature their house. Social media is huge. Obviously, everyone's looking on Zillow or Realtor. So having their home featured there is important. So we show them a combination of everything that we do to really put them at the forefront. And that, you know, it's, yes, are they saving money by listing the house by themselves? Sure, as a for sale by owner, you know, but the money that they're paying in commission is an investment. They're investing in me. Yeah to sell their home for more money. And that's what I also work with, excuse me, in terms of with I, anytime I'm interviewing, if I know they're gonna be interviewing with other agents, I explain, I say, look at what they do. And I pull up some of their listings because a lot of the sellers are candid. They're gonna tell me who that they're working with, who yep. that they're interviewing with. And I say, look at their listings in comparison to ours. We yep. put together a better presentation so we can show the value of what they're getting. They're gonna pay the same percentage typically between one agent or another, 
you know, but you know, what are you getting for that? And who are you getting? Are you getting somebody that's going to list your house and disappear, you know, and Hey, they're going to use the it's, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to speak from uh, <laughs> one of my investors, one of the investors that I work with, he prior to working with me was working with another agent. And he said he followed the three P principle and the three P principle is you take photos, you post a listing and you pray that it sells the three P's, right? You're wow. okay. Yeah. That, that's the three P principle. So most agents will do that. They'll post, you know, take pictures, post it up and pray that it sells. And that's the opposite of what we do. And a lot of agents that are my competitors, that's what they do. They'll put it up. They'll get the listing because, hey, you know, they've been doing it for 30 years or however long. So any, any, you know, realtors right now that are in the, in, you know, in, in the industry, like a short period of time, you can win it over your competitors that have been doing it for a long period of time. If you can provide more value than they can, but you have to be able to show it. Yeah. So I understand as a buyer, why I'd want to work with you. I understand as a seller, why I'd work with you. You're putting together a pretty sizable team in just four years. What is it as an agent that I would be attracted to when coming to your team? I mean, the thing is, is, you know, with every team is so different and the dynamics of every team are so yeah. different. So reasons for wanting to join a team, it's really because as an individual agent getting into this industry, especially how aggressive this market is really hard you know it's, it's very difficult and you hear from you know and the statistics are different in every market but it's something you know something where along the lines of about 90 percent of first year agents fizzle out yeah you know because it's almost mm. impossible to do it by yourself because you'll get a few deals here or there but you're not making enough to be able to market and advertise yourself to where people will recognize you yep. so joining a team i mean imagine starting off never having sold a house before and joining a team that's like you said you know we're doing about 200 transactions this year you can walk into a listing presentation and say hey i'm part of one of the number one teams we've sold over you know 200 houses this year and we've done this and we've done that mm -hmm. so just for the clout of being on a team that's able to do that is a huge reason to want to join but in addition you know depending on your team leader they'll provide a lot of other you know very important and valuable things like training exactly. Yeah. leads, you know, the ability to ask somebody questions directly that isn't competing with you. They're trying yeah. to help you help you yep. the reason that, you know, I think the team structure, especially in real estate moving forward, I think it's kind of the way of the future. I feel like more and more people are going to come together and new agents are going to at least start and learn by being on a team before they go out and try to do it on their own. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's a way to go. I mean, I've been doing this for a while now, but if I were to get in as a brand new agent, there is so much to it just in creating the training for yeah. my team takes me months to yeah. create all that stuff yeah. to, to look at it regurgitate it and, right. and get the reps because you can't just watch it once you got to get the reps on all this stuff mm -hmm. uh it, it's just it's a lot you're absolutely right and it looks like you know how they all start i mean they go out they go out with you they buy a house and they're doing the math and they're like that's a lot of money. I need to be an agent i sold three houses i'm rich <laughs> but there's so much more to it it's a lot. There's so wow. much to it. And, and you know, and, and, but, but to your point, one of, uh, one of my first clients was one of my best friends. Uh, his name's Carlos Salinas and he was the second agent, you know, me and him pretty much started this yeah. team together. He saw what I was doing, loved it, quit his full-time job, came and worked with me and the rest is history. He's a very successful agent now. So, you know, but yeah, everybody sees it right now and there's more agents starting out right now than I feel like ever before, just because yeah. it's right now, it looks like, Hey, all you have to do is hold up a for sale sign and you've got a deal, yeah. but getting there and getting that deal to close and understanding all the intangibles and having the right people behind you. Because even though I have a great team of agents, the team that I have behind me beyond that is what's so important. Yes. My, my mortgage lenders, you know, RCG mortgage, they're, amazing my attorneys i use you know and again you know for for local people you know i use mariana dalton and aesop german they're both the two best real estate attorneys on long island so if you're in this area and you're looking for somebody those are your go-to's but you know the inspectors every part of it it's so important that you have the right people to help facilitate the deal or you'll be dead in the water you know you use it you know a person that has no idea what they're doing they're just getting started out they don't have the right people behind them, you know, it, it's, it's the biggest reason why I feel like people fizzle out because they'll put together deals, 
but they won't be able to get them to fruition. And that's, wow. you know, we, we talk about the roller coaster all the time, you know, wow. the highs and the lows of real estate, right? The best thing you can do is eliminate the lows and try to make the highs and lows close as possible. Yeah. And the way that you do that is consistency. Yeah. You've got to put it all together. I love that. I love that. So talking about all that, I'm, I'm a Florida guy. You're a New York guy. Yep. Uh, I've had a lot of clients lately coming from New York, coming from New Jersey, and they're telling me about the real estate market up there. I'm hearing that there are a lot of things closed. I'm hearing from a lot of agents that it's it's challenging to do showings. It's challenging to get open houses. Yeah. Um but things are still popping up there. It sounds like the market's still crazy. So to me, it, it's challenging to understand. Uh, and so from your point of view, what does it look like in up there in New York right now? If you're telling somebody again, for, who's from Florida and I've never been to New York before. Sure. It's, it's a crazy market. I would say, you know, it's funny when, when everything that happened, which was what's going on in the world right now, the pandemic and everything, when we got shut down back in March, pretty much everybody at that point thought this is the end. You know, we're yeah. not going to be able to sell houses anymore. The real estate market's going to change dramatically. And then April came around. And at that, you know, in, in the first little bit of a while, you know, I was like, you know, I was a little concerned myself. Yeah. April came along and I was starting to get more and more and more calls. And we were getting people that were reaching out to us that were willing to buy houses without even physically going in to see them. So we could, the only way that we could show houses was through 3D virtual tours or through doing FaceTime on our phones. Yeah. You know, I would communicate with a client. I would show them the house through a walkthrough on my phone and they would say, okay, let's put in an offer. You know, so the market, I knew at that point, I'm like, okay, if there's this many people now trying to buy houses this way, as soon as we're allowed to physically show houses again, it's going to be nuts. And that's what happened. May came around. We were allowed to start showing houses again all the different regulations that were in place, but it was just absolute insanity. I've talked to every agent that I've, you know, come into contact with over the last, you know, however long and all of them, whether they've been in the business for 10 years, 30 years, they've all said they've never seen a market like this before. Yeah. And it's true, you know, especially, especially for where I am on Long Island, we have people coming from Manhattan. We have people coming from Queens. We have people coming from Nassau into Suffolk County, you know, which is primarily where I do a lot of my business. They're all coming out here because they want to get as far away from that as possible because the, the market in Manhattan, you know, is extremely expensive or it was or it has yeah. been. Yeah. Now that people don't have to work physically and they can work remotely, everything has changed. Now they realize how much money that they can save by moving further out east and how much more property and you know how much bigger of a house they can get. So we got an influx of those people, but then at the same time, we had all those people that were pent up that weren't able to buy a house yeah. for a month and a half. So it culminated to create this vortex of a crazy market. Yeah. And then on top of that, getting a mortgage under 3% for a 30 year mortgage, absolute insanity. So we just have this incredible surge of buyers that want to buy. And even right now, you know, a couple of agents are saying it's starting to slow down a bit. It's still the most insane market I've ever seen. You know, yeah. I've never seen anything like it, you know, so it's, you know, I don't know how it is in Florida right now, but man, yeah. it's crazy here right now. If you list a home at market, it, it's gone in 48 hours, yeah. multiple offers. Yeah. yeah. Period. Yeah. 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 Even if you go, I mean, I, I've had a couple go 20, 25 over and I've said, mm, in this market, okay. But yeah. just <laughs> yeah. the management, you're probably going to get this. Yep. And they would sell for ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 more than what I had told them yeah. the numbers were at. And it's just, it's crazy right now. And I don't think that, like I've seen a lot of these real estate groups on Facebook, I follow them closely. I think that's 95% of the markets right now, like around the US, everybody's yeah. popping. It's pretty rare to see somebody who says, ah, it's slowed down a little bit. It's right. it's extremely rare. So I think we're seeing that everywhere. I, I think the only, like the biggest challenge that we're running into right now is appraisals. I feel like the market has yeah. risen so quickly in such a short period of time that appraisers are hard, having a hard time to justify yeah. these price jumps because- I sold houses to people about a year ago that are selling for between 50 to a hundred thousand more than they paid for it. It's and, and they've done nothing to their home. You yeah. know, so the price jump has been dramatic, but at the same time, you know, people talk about, you know, the recession that we had 
you know, earlier on, you know, back 2006, 2007, is there going to be a bubble? Is it going to pop? Are all the prices going to drop? And I feel like it hasn't artificially risen. I feel like it's just been the demand that has increased yes. the prices. Yep. I don't think we're going to see a drop, honestly, until interest rates start going back up into the four and the fives, you know, and then maybe prices level off. But I, I don't see a bubble like a lot of people do. Yeah. And even, I mean, when you start talking about bubbles, I, I did sell real estate back in 2008, 2009. It was ugly. Yeah, but It sure. was so different. Now, a lot of the demand, at least in my market, a lot of markets, it's because there's no inventory. Like it just, right. it doesn't matter that COVID is going on. It, 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 I don't even know if rates went up a couple points, if there's no inventory, what are you going to do? I still think people right. are going to sell homes. And historically, even though if it went up to five, they'd be like, oh my gosh, the world's ending. Historically, that is still incredibly low. And that's a big Absolutely. point. Yep. Yeah. So I don't, I, I agree with you. I don't see it going anywhere uh, for a long time, at least the foreseeable future. There'd have to be something massive to change that. Right. Right. Um, big change in the world. Something dramatic that nobody can predict. But I yeah. mean, even if you look at it, COVID happened and that was the dramatic and crazy thing. And all it did is make the real estate world explode even bigger. Yep. So, you know, it's going to have to be something that very negatively impacts the world as a whole because yeah. real estate drives everything, you know, every, you know, all industries kind of, you know, in some way, shape or form have to do with real estate, you know, yeah. so people always need to buy a house. People always need somewhere to live. You know, people always need to sell. So I, I you know, it's, it's one of those things where even if you look back historically over the last, you know, six or seven or eight recessions we've had, only twice really has real estate gone down. And all the other ones, real estate's actually either stayed the same or gone up. So I, I don't foresee this market changing anytime soon. Mm, I like the attitude, man. That's what I like. I like to be around that. Okay, so let me brag about you a little bit more if I haven't done it enough. You are the <laughs> broker agent of the month. For the broker agent advisor publication again we've got the link up top in the the description they're showing you where that is how did you become connected to them how did they find you and what was it that made you the what was it broker agent of the month broker agent of the month that's pretty impressive yeah it, it was pretty cool i mean they they had reached out to me i mean i guess it's through you know the i mean my presence online the amount of transactions i've done yeah. You know, and they asked me if I would be interested, you know, in potentially being in the running for something like that. So obviously I applied, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in trying to, sure. you know, put myself out there. And, you know, it just so happened and worked out that a culmination of all the different things that I've been doing led to me being, you know, the, the broker agent of the month. And I was, I was honestly, it was, you know, amazing achievement to, you know, add to my career. And again, like you said, in such a short period of time, it, it you know, it baffles me sometimes, you know, I, I look back at how much I've done, you know, in this amount of time and it's, it's, it's exciting to me. And it's why I'm in this industry because I, you know, I, I've put my energy into a lot of different things prior to getting into this industry and nothing has given me the return and the reward that this business has. And I, I love it for that. That's awesome, man. Well, congratulations. That's pretty Thank you. cool. Yeah. So last question. We kind of touched on this a little bit. Sure. Um, what do you see 2021 looking like? Uh, is it different? Is it the same? And why? I, I think there's a lot of a big question mark. You know, there's obviously a lot of things going on in the world right now that could yeah. change and adjust. You know, we have an election coming up. You know, who knows? It's the biggest question everybody looks at and everybody, you know, in real estate Anytime there's an election, it's always, you know, what's going to change? What's yeah. going to happen? You know, so I, I think, you know, it doesn't matter which way, you know, you're you're planning on going and voting and whatever, you know, either way, I think real estate's going to predominantly stay the same. I think in 2021, I think obviously, I, I mean, this has just been a crazy market. I don't think I've ever spent as much time as I have in the last, you know, six months doing anything that I have trying to facilitate this business. So if it continues to go this way for another year, I you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be honest. It's it's crazy. But that being said, you know, I I think we're going to continue to see the market moving at the pace it's going at now. I'm hoping that inventory levels kind of adjust a little bit so that buyers have a little bit more of a chance. It's tough right now to be a buyer. It's it's I, I deal, you know, and a, and a lot of agents, once they get to a certain point in their career, they kind of shift from working more on the listing side to more on the buyers, or excuse me, more on the buyer side to more on the listing side. Yep. 
myself, you know, I, I like still, I try as much as I can to make it a 50, 50 balance. And, you know, it's, it's, it's so important because it makes you in tune with the market. Yeah. When you're working with buyers, you know what they're looking for. You know what they're looking to try to do. So I still, a good portion of my time is working with my buyers and it's tough right now. Like you said before, you put in, you know, four different offers for a couple. No. I think I've, you know, for some buyers, I've put in about 15 to 20 Ooh. offers where they're getting beat out. Bidding wars doesn't matter. So it's tough. It's tough out there. So I hope inventory levels rise a little bit, give buyers a little bit better of a chance. I think prices are going to try to start to level out a little bit. I can't see them increasing much more than we are now. I think it's just going to get out of hand if it does. Yep. Yep. You know, and, but, but, you know, I, I think I'm positive on it. I think 2021 is going to be a great year for real estate as well. And, you know, hopefully it gets a little bit less crazy, but, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic for it. So you touched on the fact that appraisals, you know, that's the concern. It's the same same concern anywhere where you've got inflated prices in such a yeah. short amount of time. I'm starting to see buyers come in with offers where they'll say, hey, we're coming in 20 grand over. We're Waving only going offer, yeah, $20,000 worth of appraisal protection. So, yep. if it, you know, if, let's say it's a $500,000 home. I'm offering 520. If the appraisal comes in 20 grand under what we're offering, we'll just pay cash. Are you yep. seeing that in New York? Yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing that. And that's... And when we're in multiple offer situations, because I deal a lot on the listing side, anytime we have multiple offers, that's one of the first questions I ask yep. when we get people going above is, hey, are you willing to guarantee that appraisal? And if they're not, and we get a deal that's maybe a little bit less, but they are, that's hands down one of the deals that we're going to take. Yep. And that's another thing to go back to what you were talking about, how to set yourself apart. If you have a buyer that's confident and that's willing to make up that difference, yep. that's a big bargaining chip too. Big time, big time. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate this. It is so, so cool having a guy like you on sharing with everybody who's watching how they can get to where it is you're at or at least attempt to get there, right? <laughs> I really appreciate it. If we've got buyers, sellers up in the Long Island area and they want to connect with you, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me uh, anywhere. I mean, look on social media, you know, look up Team Sure. That's my team. You can call me at any time. My phone number is 631-974-2609. You can find me anytime you need me. I, honestly, if anybody has questions, call me, text me, email me, zachsher at gmail.com. I'm always available. Too easy, man. Well, I appreciate it again. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Have a good one.